I kind of missed my chance on reviewing Catherine Classic, but I finally got the chance to review Catherine Full Body. So you know what? While I'm going to review Catherine Full Body for the most part, I am going to do a little bit of comparison between this and Classic. So if you're new to Catherine, which version should you get? Or should you get these games at all? Welcome to Ababen's Uncapped, not exactly the sexiest review show on YouTube. Today's review is going to be on Catherine Full Body, Atlas's enhanced version of an old game from 2011 Catherine, or as it's Steam release title says, Catherine Classic. Before we get to the review, YouTube might or might not demonetize this video because it's freaking Catherine, so if you'd like to support my work, you can do so by checking the links down below. Also, huge thanks to Isak for the pledge on Patreon, you are fantastic. So what's the story of Catherine? It's very simple, really. You're playing as Vincent Brooks, a guy who is unable to commit through a serious relationship with his current girlfriend, Catherine, who I'm going to refer to as K. Catherine, I'll explain that later. During a drunken night, he stumbled upon Catherine, who I'm going to refer to as C. Catherine, two characters both pronounced the same except spelled differently. It does really get confusing, so K. Catherine and C. Catherine. Got it? Good. C. Catherine seduces our main protagonist into a one-night stand until the entire thing is turned into an affair. Unfortunately, since Vincent is such a cowardly doofus, he is unable to just explain to C. Catherine that he has a freaking girlfriend. He even said it himself at one point, but didn't act on it because... He's a freaking doofus. So he ends up cheating on K. Catherine with C. Catherine, and his inability to tell her what's going on just puts him more and more into trouble. And one of those troubles is this recurring nightmare that he has, where he's turned into a sheep and forced to climb a bunch of boxes before a giant butt monster from hell come to eat him. And when I say giant butt monster, I mean giant butt monster. The nightmare is actually turned serious as there are people who actually died as they are having these nightmares. So Vincent has to keep on climbing or else he will actually be eaten by the butt monster and die in real life. People dying in the metaverse ended up dying in real life? That sounds like an Atlas game. So expect nuanced discussions about the values of life while having people trying to survive the metaverse from giant butt monsters. At least you didn't have to encounter the giant dick monster from the series next door. As if that's not enough, the full body version adds another new character, Q Catherine. But instead of pronouncing it like the two other Catherines, they just call her Rin. So the game turns from a love triangle into a love square in full body. Who is Vincent going to choose to commit his relationship with? Can he escape the torment and the suffering of choice and commitment? Now unlike any other Atlas games, this game can be finished in about 12 to 15 hours. So the length for the game is your typical single player campaign game rather than the overlong JRPG mess that was the Persona series. And that my friend is on the easy difficulty, which is the second level of this game's difficulty scale as opposed to safety, which is way too game journalist for me. And while I can play the game on normal just fine, I stick too easy so that I can just get this game over with. So if you're playing this game on even harder difficulties, expect to finish the game in about 20 hours, especially if you're one of those guys who like to replay the game's level to get all the gold medals and all of that. Beyond this silly romantic love story, Catherine is a puzzle platformer. It sounds simple enough, you just move blocks from one place after another to create stairways to get to the top floor but just because it sounds simple doesn't actually mean that it is simple. Now I did have a script for my Catherine Classic review and I mentioned how even the easy difficulty of the game is freaking difficult. Well, considering that I die quite a lot of times in this difficulty, either I really suck at the game or the game is actually challenging. But that's the classic version. Full body's easy difficulty is actually really easy or at least the brand new remix stages. Yes, you can actually choose between classic stages or remix stages, and the game would differentiate the medals between the two. The difference? There are new colored blocks that join together to form to one, and that's it. Or at least that's the major difference that I noticed. I died like a hundred times in the easy difficulty of classic, but only died maybe once or twice in the easy difficulty of full body. Maybe because when you die, the game would automatically undo your failure if you have them, which means that you're going to see the death scenes a lot less. And yes, this also happens in the normal difficulty, so if you're playing on classic, easy would still provide a good enough challenge. But if you're playing full body, play the classic maps and bump up the difficulty if you're looking for some challenge. But in either versions, the gameplay is absolutely fun. The joy for this game is finding that optimal route that can clear through the levels in the breeze. Throughout my constant restarts and restarts, I managed to find quite a lot of optimal routes for a lot of the levels in the game, netting me the gold medals almost 
every single time. I didn't even use any item or purchase anything, I just simply move on, pass through the blocks, and try to find a clever route through them. As a puzzle game, it does a really damn good job at bending your minds and making your brain to think of the most optimal routes, but finding these optimal routes took a lot of sacrifices. But what about that weird ass story involving killer asses from the depths of the metaverse? That's just one part of the story ladies and gentlemen, and Catherine's story, well, it isn't exactly persona levels of quality, but it definitely has a lot of good things going on for them. The story of the two versions are pretty much the same for the most part. There are a couple of additional scenes in full body, mostly involving the new character Rin, but there are also new flashback moments detailing you and K. Catherine's relationship prior to the game, which is actually really good because I feel like the classic version doesn't provide enough reason for the player to hold on to K. Catherine. These flashback sessions do make me feel more guilty in breaking the relationship off and making me want to hold off into that for more. But in neither versions of the game, Vincent is still a freaking wuss. He's a nervous, whiny, cowardly, and indecisive protagonist that makes me seriously want to punch him in the face. He always puts himself in the most panic-inducing situations where he can just resolve the problems by calming down and being rational and explaining things to both parties. But no, he has to whine and drink and whine. And that's just on the classic version. With Rin on the party putting more dilemmas on this wuss, my opinions on him lessens from a punch to the face to an additional kick in the balls. This guy cannot calm his dick down. He's perfectly aware that he's cheating, he's aware that it's wrong, and yet he does it anyway. But that's just on the real world section. In the nightmare section, Vincent, for some reason, does a complete character 180. While there are moments in the nightmare where he is legitimately terrified, for the most part, he is actually really calm and rational, to the point where he's able to cheer up the rest of the sheep that got put into the nightmare. In fact, that's part of the game's side quests. He cheers them up so much that he's able to save them from their doom and see them later on in real life. I also really love how during the confessional booths, he progressively becomes jaded and not giving a damn about anything. The really strong and rational Vincent is completely different to the passive, pathetic, cowardly self real life Vincent. It's almost like a meta commentary on internet tough guys. I also really hate how in the classic version, the story progresses towards Vincent begging forgiveness towards K. Catherine, even though you're trying to seek for C. Catherine's ending. How Vincent brought back the two together and confessing his love for them at the very end is quite unconvincing for me. I think it's mostly because the game doesn't really spend a lot of time between Vincent and either of the Catherines, and this applies to the full body version as well, as there aren't any major changes in the story. And when they do spend the time together, it's mostly taken over by Vincent being an overly nervous beta male wuss who really needs to get a grip makes me question how the hell can any of these two girls get along very well with this doofus. Three in full body. Now Catherine has many different endings. There are the classic endings and some new full body endings. In classic there are three endings for each character and two additional freedom endings. In full body there's one new ending for each character and three more endings for Rin. All of these endings are determined based on your alignment and the choices that you make throughout the entire game. The game's alignment system is an order versus chaos thing, represented with blue and red respectively. So if you answer questions that would lead to order and stability, you'd get more blue morality points, etc. Some of the questions are a bit weird, like how is being a cat person represents chaos? I thought dogs are more chaotic, or in my experience at least. But then again, you don't see a lot of trained cats these days, do you? Anyway, overall, I'm fine with the endings. All of them are very satisfying and funny and wholesome. The new endings for full body are very funny too. My complaint, however, lies within the game's questions. You're not really answering them based on your honest opinion, you're just answering them based on the ending that you will get. Even one of the sheeps are aware of this flaw. And now let's talk about a big problem with Full Body that is pretty much fixed on Catherine Classic, weirdly enough. Full Body runs on 30 FPS, while Classic runs on 60 FPS. Now yes, Classic only barely runs on 60 FPS when it first launched, but the developer Developers at least fixed it as time went on, which is great, but full body still runs at 30 FPS. The game doesn't look that much different compared to classic, and yet it somehow runs even worse. And I'm running the classic version on my GTX 1050 laptop. It's not exactly the most powerful hardware in the world, but it runs the game very well. How can the PS4 being outmatched by a freaking laptop on the same resolution no less? It's absolutely mind-boggling. Maybe because Atlas 
developers deliberately capped the game to 30, but come on guys, this is an 8 year old game. Overall, Catherine is still a great puzzle platformer game, and Full Body honestly didn't really add much to the experience. The Catherine that I love is still there, and a lot of the additional content are great, but Catherine Classic is only $20 on Steam, while Full Body is sold for $60. Two different versions of the game being sold in the market today on different platforms, so hear me out carefully on this, because I'm going to speak to many different types of potential buyers, which is why I'm going to provide this handy flowchart. If you have played Classic, get Full Body on discount for around $20 to $30, regardless if you're looking for story or gameplay. It's not worth $60 buying the same game again, unless if you're a hardcore fan and you want to own everything and you want to support Atlas and all. For those who have never played Classic but you have a decent entry-level PC like mine, just stick to Classic and don't bother getting full body, even if you have a PS4. You'll get pretty much the same essential experience for significantly less price. For those who have never played Classic and doesn't have a good PC to run classic, the question is if you're rated for the story or gameplay. If you're rated for the story, wait for the game to discount for around $20 to $30. While full body's gameplay content are plentiful, there aren't a lot of new story content to justify that $60 price tag, unless if you want to replay the same game over and over and over again just to get different endings. However, if you're in it for the puzzle gameplay, then sure, the game is worth it for $60. There are tons of content in the game that would last you hours upon hours upon hours Hours. I haven't tested a new multiplayer mode because I don't have anyone else to play with, but you can definitely replay this game, get new medals, get new content, etc. And there you go. Hopefully that isn't too complicating. I have a couple more games to review, so stay tuned.